All right, welcome everybody to our first ever live virtual art class. Um, we logged on a little early, so we're gonna wait to see if some people will join us. Just wanted to make sure we're working and to say hello to everybody. Um, we're doing a brand new thing here at Ziegler where we do a weekly spotlight. And this week we chose The Violinist by William Tolliver. One of my very favorite artists, any of you who know me know that I love to talk about Tolliver. I love his colors and his especially movement, which is what we'll be talking about today. So we're just gonna kill a little bit of time. Let me see how we're doing. Do we have anybody yet? While we're waiting, let's go ahead and remind you of our supplies, okay? So everybody needs a piece of paper. We're using watercolor, we're, we're using watercolor palette, but you don't have to use watercolor paper for this, okay? Um, in fact, I would prefer that you not. So I'm just using some heavyweight drawing paper, but really, even if you have just a piece of computer paper, we can do this today. Um, so don't worry too much about what kind of paper, you just want some paper. You're gonna need a watercolor palette. I'm pretty lucky, I have a ton of colors. Actually, the we have water pellets just like this for our giveaway. So, um, so if you want a palette with so many colors, you know, get entered into our drawing, okay? So we need a watercolor palette. Um, we need water. Now, if you notice here, I use a dog bowl, okay? A lot of my kids in my class think it's hilarious, but um, in this, I'm, spe I'm talking specifically to you parents, okay? This water bowl, it is very sturdy, okay? Kids can't tip it over. And also, it has two sides. So I have a place where I can clean my brush and get it all dirty, and then I still have clean water so that it doesn't muddy up my... Um, my colors so that is a, a good hint if you don't have one i highly recommend it this wasn't on the list but you do need some sort of a rag or um, paper towel and let's see what else you need a pencil a black marker i'm using a sharpie today it's okay if you have a washable marker um because we're using that last so it doesn't have to be waterproof and i'm using a medium round brush <clears throat> these are my favorite favorite brushes in class all my kids know if i have to go to a brush it's going to be this if you have a bigger brush, that is fine. In fact, you might have an easier time with this project if you have a bigger brush. Try not to go any smaller though, because we're not doing a little tiny details. You're gonna do, be painting a huge area. Um, and those are the supplies we need. Not a lot today. I think we're ready to get started. Are we ready to talk about movement in art? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So the violinist, here we are, but Tolliver. And when you look at it, you can, almost tell what I'm talking about when we talk about movement and art. And he uses a lot of colors and lines and just you can see how active it looks. You can almost hear the music because of, um, because of the way it, it is, okay? So movement, it sounds very exciting, right? Just like dance. And dance is actually a form of art that is complete movement, um, but you can also do have movement in visual art, which is what, you know, this 2D art. Here's another famous example. Most of you will probably know this picture. This is uh, Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. Here we have, you can see the movement in the sky. You can almost feel that sky moving in it. So it's not stagnant or holding still. It, our eyes move with the picture. And here's another one of my favorites, The Great Wave. This is a little different than the last one where we saw the movement in the sky. And when this one, what, where we're seeing the movement is right here in this wave. And you can almost, you can just see how that water is just moving up and around. Here's another one I found. It's very similar to what we'll be doing today. Um, where you can tell, you see the different colors and the brush strokes that make that movement. So the fish aren't just standing there or sitting. Just, I guess fish don't really stand. They're not floating in the same in one place they're swimming and these lines and colors help help show us that so let me show you what we're going to be doing today we're starting with a pretty simple project this is our first time doing live and i wanted to make sure it was something we could all accomplish um so we're going to play around with movement but we're going to be using our paint and our brushes so here's a finished copy. You can tell, you can really see the different colors I used and all of these swirls. And what I did is because we're being inspired by the, the violinist, 
I kind of thought about music and one of my favorite pieces and I almost listened to that music in my head as I let the brush move. And as we get closer, I'll show you. Here's another example. <clears throat> okay, got a little more uh, detailed on this one and added a little trumpet. Um, but you can see here the movement is, is quite different from the other one where we had these nice swirls. This one's a little crazier. And then I have one here with no, but just to show you the movement of the lines here. Okay, so we're gonna have fun. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Let's get painting. Let me pull out my, oh, let's talk about line real quick and movement. I wanna talk a little bit more about movement. So lines, let's look at this half of the picture here. When you think of the, a building, a building has lines, right? A bottom, a top, very stagnant, very non-moving lines, okay? But then we can think about lines and we can think about movement. And here I have a circle, it could be anything. I'm gonna turn it, let's see, let's see it's a baseball. Sort of like that. I don't really know how the baseball looks like, okay? But it's just kind of floating in the air, right? So I'm going to do something with two simple lines and you're gonna actually realize what direction that ball is going. Do you see how the movement of those lines, instead of straight, sharp lines, it's, it's just we had it move, all right? And if we wanted to, it could actually, we could do a ball that was really bouncy. Okay, and this would be our ground. But you see, the ball is still floating and it's stagnant, and stagnant's a fancy word for it's not moving, okay? And it's just our lines that are helping guide our eyes so that we can kind of tell what's moving. All right, now onto the fun stuff. Thank you. We, we have six people with us right now. Oh, hi. We want to ask them to go ahead and give us a thumbs up or something so we know who they are. Oh, absolutely. Um, hello, everybody. If you'd love to, we'd love for you to give us a thumbs up. Let us know you're here. Um, any questions or, or comments that you have, please, please do that. I've got Tisha sitting here. She's reading those comments as they're coming in, so I won't miss any. Um, I'll give you guys a few seconds. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. So we're starting with... Our paper and again this is not watercolor paper watercolor paper is really thick and when you put I'm putting I'm just putting water on my brush I don't know if you guys can see that so I'm just picking up some clean water when you put water on a paper that's not a watercolor page the water gets soaked up a bit and I don't I know you guys probably can't see this because it's just water watercolor paper your water kind of sits on top of it in puddles which is amazing and we will be using those in this series but today, I want your, your um, paper to really soak in your color. And that's because we're looking for the movement. Um, uh, we're looking at the movement, hi Dorothy, mm -hmm. of, um, of your brush strokes, okay? All right, of course, before we get really started, you have to decide your colors. And let's talk about color. This is our color wheel. Hope everybody has seen a color wheel before with our primary, secondary, and this one even has our tertiary colors, which are the primaries and secondaries mixed together. What I want you to do is, I'm not gonna tell you exactly what colors to use. This is your art. You get to decide what color, what mood are you in today? But when you're looking at your colors, think about your color wheel, and we wanna look for colors that are friends, okay? And that means colors that are near each other. Um, let me show my example here of these oranges and these yellows. So they mixed really well together and they're, so we're gonna just stick with the friends colors. So reds, oranges, or purples, reds, and blues. If you have a color wheel with you, you can look at that and just take a second, look at this one and decide your colors. I think I'm gonna stick with my inspiration with Tolliver. He had such warm, beautiful reds, I mean, um, oranges and yellows. I'm gonna stick with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my brush, it just has plain clean water, and I'm gonna, what I call, wake up my colors, okay? And that's simply, I'm gonna pick the colors I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna drop in a little color in there. And pick up some more, drop in some more color, okay? Let's see, I think we'll definitely use some yellow. I like it. So your, your color palette, your watercolor palette, if it's like mine, all of your friendly colors are next to each other. It makes it super easy. I think I'm gonna do this deep color, I like that. Um, you wanna choose at least three colors, but you don't have to stop at three colors, okay? All right, 
So now I've got a few of my colors woken up. So if you notice in my water, I don't know if you guys noticed this earlier, but I have a sponge on one side and it says rinse right here. This is for my dirty water. So every time I come back and I change my color and I have to wash my brush off. So I'm gonna just pick up some orange and you can even see, can you see the color. Um, oh, go ahead and ask everybody to please give us a thumbs up so we can make sure their name gets entered into the drawing for being here. Um, because I'm new to this, so I don't quite even know how to see who's all here. Without oh, okay, okay. So we need to make sure make sure you guys are giving us a thumbs up. That way we have your name and we can put you guys in the drawing because you're in the drawing just for sitting here watching the class with us. So give us a thumbs up um, and let Miss Isha know you guys are here, okay? All right, so literally you literally, I know how to know. You, we're, we're all learning here. Please be patient with us. This is our, it's all of our first time. Um, this is definitely different from what we usually do in the summer, but... I'm excited that we get to do it. So we're just gonna, we're gonna learn together, okay guys? All right, so you can see that there's a lot of color on my brush. Now, if I wanted to go back and use a different color, if I just put this in my water, all of that color would come off my brush and it would make my water dirty. So I'm gonna put it over here and I'm gonna use that sponge and really wipe the color off. I don't know if you guys can see the color floating in there. So now that's where all the dirty color is. So now my brush is clean and I can pick up clean water and continue to paint. One more trick before we put color on the paper. Um, try to start using your lighter colors first. And it really, it's mostly a problem with yellow. You're gonna notice that yellow will pick up all the other colors and it, and it gets covered easily. Um, with our project, we're gonna do a lot of mixing, so don't worry if your colors get messy. I'll show you how to clean them at the end, okay? So, here we go. So, what I'm gonna do is pick up my brush. I'm gonna think in my head of a type of music, something maybe a little wild and crazy. I think I wanna show you guys the, the swirls and things like that. So let's start, let's start with the big, the bright orange. Okay, I'm gonna pick up lots of color. There's lots of water, lots of color. And I am just going to put my brush on the paper and do different movements, all right? Now if you notice, I started to run out of water, right? And because I started to run out of water, what happened? My color didn't spread as much. So I can pick up just some clean water and keep going. Ooh, I like that little swirl. I'm actually gonna wipe my brush. I think I'm gonna pick a different color now. Let's see this brownish color. And I'm gonna start halfway here. Ooh, let's see what happens. All right, so we are showing movement here. We're, we are making our viewer look at this swirl, right? So the eyes are moving with it, so it's lots of movement. Ooh, I like that. So I'm gonna wash my brush off. Pick up some more water. It's okay if you mix up your two waters. That happens all the time, especially my poor adults. You guys do that a lot. All right, so I'm picking up lots of yellow. You see that on my brush? I think I'm gonna come over here. Let's see. This is almost gonna look like a hurricane. We're gonna just make it go all kinds of directions. Ooh, oh, I liked that one. All right. And again, it's okay you're starting to run out of color. That's because this is not watercolor paper and it, the paper is soaking up that water. And that's okay because it's all about the movement of your brush. We are just gonna sit here and have fun picking lots of different colors. Here I have a different orange now and doing lots of different movements. And see what happens when you put the brush on the paper. <clears throat> what happens when you pick up just clean water and you go in between two colors? Look what happens there, how it blends together. So this is a great opportunity. To, to, we're gonna make a beautiful finished piece, but it's a great opportunity to just sit here and play with your, hi Patty, did you get your brand new watercolors? I know you picked up some watercolors today. Um, so we're just gonna sit here and continue. Now we can keep doing the same movement over and over again and overlap. Or if you're feeling really crazy today, you don't have to do the same movement. Don't be afraid to paint right off the paper, okay? Um, this is watercolor, so even if you don't, you should have a paper behind, because look how Miss Jessica made a mess already. But if you don't, this is watercolor and it will wash right up. So let's see what other kind of movements. Let's do kind of a, ooh, a crazy movement there. So this is really all about seeing what type of lines and what type of movement <clears throat> excuse me, you can do on a page. And I really want you to experiment. I want you to see what happens when you mix 
clear water with the two colors. See what happens when you add a new color in. Ooh, I like that. All right. If you have these white places, we're going to want to cover your entire page. So go ahead and really get in there. Um, usually with watercolors, I ask you guys to be a little dainty with your brush. Dainty. Do you guys know what that means? You know, very light and careful. But because we're covering this entire page, don't be afraid to really push your brush down. You see how when I push it, I can make a little line. And if you want to, absolutely do that. Where you just don't put as much pressure down on your brush. But this being the beginning of our series, I want us to really play around and let's get really comfortable with your brush and the paint. Any questions yet over there? I guess you'd have told me by now, huh, Tisha? Mm -hmm. You notice I, like I added some pink in there. I like pink and orange. Oops, forgot to clean off my brush. Don't worry about water splashes. It's water, it will dry. This almost looks like these two. I might combine these two into, into one. like little worms going around the page. I kind of like that. I might nickname it. So I know everybody's summer has been, I've been, I've really missed seeing you guys in person. I hope some of my kiddos are, are watching. I don't know. Do you know if, uh, is Sarah on there? The only ones I've heard from, uh, are Patty and Dorothy. And Dorothy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope Mr. Bentley and Austin are watching. I'm hoping that right now it's because they're busy painting. Well, that's right. Let's add some more pink in here. So, and remember, we're just, our goal for this is to cover the entire page with color in lines that show movement, any kind of movement. That's completely up to you. And you've noticed I just didn't have enough color there. I don't like how dark that is, so I'm going to put some more. And get a lot of color on that brush. Ooh, there we go. Here we go. So next week, I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you guys about next week why we just continue to paint, okay? Next week, I'm gonna give you a sneak, you guys are the first ones to know that our spotlight picture is called The Chickens. Now, I know some of you know Miss Jessica. <laughs> and Miss Jessica loves chickens. This is one of my favorite pieces in the museum. So I'm really excited that next week we're gonna draw a chicken together. And we're, but we're going to use a lot of these skills. So make sure you're practicing. And again, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to make mistakes like that. I don't really like the way that looks. So I'm going to figure something out and move it around and play with it till I like it. And I think that involves a different color. Ooh, let's see when I put that light color didn't show up too well. Oh, not enough water. Don't be afraid. I'm going to keep telling you, if you're having issues getting paint on your paper, it's because you don't have enough water. So Miss Natalie's not watching yet? Not that I can see. Okay. It's, I don't know how to click on it and see. Don't and worry, guys. We're going to get better at this and I all of us see. together where we're live okay. and we do it together. Ooh, my paper! Look at all my movement and craziness in my oh, paper. My I can't wait to see yeah. your pictures, parents. If you've got kids doing artwork right now, go ahead and take pictures of them doing their artwork. We'd love to see that. I love to see them in action. I keep going for these lighter colors, but I'm not feeling the lighter colors today. Ooh, I like that. All right, I do, I love that, but I want my colors to blend a little more. So I'm gonna wash my brush off. Dorothy said she loves the chicken painting. Oh, yay! <laughs> we do too, that's our why we chose room. it. And our Bailey, she made a coloring page. You guys will definitely wanna do that one. It is adorable. We also have a coloring page for violinists. If you, if you need a copy, you can swing by here or you can download it from Facebook. So you see how I just, I just used just clean water. I'm drying my brush off a little. Um, and that water is just going to kind of soften my edge so that those colors blend a little better. That's why Miss Jessica loves watercolors. Well, I like chalks and I like all kinds of stuff. 
I like whatever we're using at the time, huh? <clears throat> Let's see. Don't forget that you can go right over where you've already painted. You see now how I have two lines interacting right there? Now, it's giving me lots of crazy movement. Obviously, I'm listening to some kind of crazy... I must be listening to some crazy music in my head because this stuff is just going all kinds of crazy. I love it. <laughs> Again, don't worry. You can paint right off the page. And look, I did do a few straight lines, and that's okay. I'm covering up my edge. It's all right if you got a few straight lines in there. Woo! All right. Ooh! Do you see I got a little orange in my yellow? And I'm okay with that. Because uh, remember, I'm going to show you how to clean it up when you're done. Right, we're getting closer. It's it's strange for Miss Jessica to not be able to see how you guys are doing, because usually you're sitting here in class with me. Um, but I tell you, I can't. I'm look, I'm covering up all my pink. No, what am I doing? <laughs> Maybe there's a problem with her closet later. Oh right. So if you're watching, if you're not, if you're watching this live, you can't pause it right now. But if you're able to catch it later and you're joining us later, you can feel free to, to pause it and or speed it up if you're faster than I am. Some of you may be. Um, especially if, you, if you're lucky and you have a nice big brush. I woke up some really dark color here. Let's see what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do a little more right here. Ooh, I like that. That against that light yellow, I really, really like that. Oh yeah. All right. So this is the beginning. This is our very first one, but we're going to be doing this every Thursday at two o'clock um, for this foreseeable future, for sure. We've got several weeks planned out right now. So you can join us each week, either live or afterwards. That's okay. Um, and again, every week, then on Monday, everybody who participated in some way in our weekly spotlight, if you made a comment, if you shared our page or shared a post if you share your work with us and we see the beautiful stuff don't forget to some of you you can really do some recreations did everybody see the recreation that Jason O'Neillian did of this week's um, piece because it was amazing I wish I had it printed right now to show you guys please go on Facebook and look at it he did such an amazing job um, in fact his wife told me he actually shaved his face just with a picture so that's commitment right there <laughs> and he looks fabulous I mean it's just great um, Dark Hughes says the overlapping is creating depth and she loves the fun you're obviously having yeah mm -hmm. you're right that's right we didn't even talk about depth and it really is with the overlapping thank you we're getting there we're just filling up the paper A little whooshy mo oops I just sprinkled my page that's all right I can get pretty messy and that's all right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all right so then on so I don't know if I finished telling you so Monday we'll do a drawing um, for some some art supplies we have some awesome stuff we have palettes just like Miss Jessica's here with all of these colors um, we've got some new brushes. You can have one of Miss Jessica's favorite. These are my favorite brushes um, for children's art. Now, adults, some of you, you can absolutely. Yeah, use I mean, these. You I, have have I do. I have, I do art to have fun, and I, and I tell right. people I'm not an artist. I, I like to teach art. I'm an art teacher. Although now I'm also a published illustrator. I'll do a little shout out to our book at the end of the page. I mean, at the end of this video. Um, so I like to play and just like to have fun. Um, and I teach a lot of young children and I like, I like supplies that can be used for lots of different things. Um, and this is some, this is a brush that I can just do about anything with. So don't forget to go all the way up that page. Woo. Really one of my favorite things about using, um, student 
supplies. Right. Is that, I don't know, I always put a lot of pressure on myself when I buy really fancy supplies. Like, if I'm going to use them, I suddenly have to create some kind of masterpiece. And if I yeah. use just a student palette, I feel really okay with More just playing. And if it's kind of a mess, then I'm okay with that. And um, I've definitely found more freedom in in playing with art, I find, now that I've just kind of moved to student, student supplies. Yeah. And, that's and a, that's a, a wonderful point. It really is. So, and it is absolutely um, true. Um, all right. So, I'm. oh, I think my page is pretty covered. I'm going to go through with just some clean water and kind of um, soften some of my harder edges, like this right here. I'm going to try to... You don't have to. Your lines can be anything you want. And also, I want you to remember, <clears throat> if you do something and you don't like the way it turned out, to not beat yourself up. Remember, this is just paper. It's just paper and water and a little bit of paint. So if you don't like it and you need to move, redo it and do something else, then do it because it's just paper. I darkened up my edge a little bit. I think I'm actually going to darken up all my edges to give it a little direction. And looking here in the center, let's see how that turns out. You know me, I'm just going to play around and do a little craziness. Ooh. Okay, now, if you have successfully filled your paper, don't worry if you haven't, okay? But if you have, then your paper is probably really wet. So, what I want you to do is, once you're done with this part, once you love your movement, mm, I don't love this part right here. So I'm actually not done yet, y'all. Okay, Miss Jessica was wrong. I wanna fix this so that it has more smooth. Maybe it'll just close in on itself. There we go, that's cool, look at that. All right. So it's not a masterpiece like Tolliver's beautiful piece, right? But it really shows you how your paintbrush and your colors can make your, your piece move. And it's not that the piece is moving, but what you're doing is you're forcing your viewer to move around and follow these lines and it gives them that sense of movement and a lot of um, cool stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna move this one to the side and what you're gonna have to do right now is you're gonna have to let your picture dry completely. Now we're live, so I'm not gonna make you guys sit here and watch my paper dry. Um, so you might have to do this part, you're gonna have to do this part in a little bit. But I just wanna show you kind of some examples of what you can do. I'll tell you what, well, let's look at that one more time. That's pretty cool. <laughs> look at that even upside down, it's pretty cool. Beautiful. We'll have to decide which one I like, which way you guys like it. I like it, all right. So, <clears throat> this is what I'm gonna show you. What I did was after I was done with this, I thought, okay, so now I have a lot of movement on my page, which all in itself, if you wanna be done and that's your picture, it's, it's gonna be beautiful. If you wanna add a little more, what I did was I added some um, notes to this because we were inspired by the, the violinist. And this one, if you're a little older and can do a little more details, I drew a little trumpet, super, super easy. I can show you guys that. Um, well, We've talked about drawing before with Miss Jessica if you've been to her classes. But if you want to draw an instrument or anything on top of your beautiful piece of movement, what I want you to do is to break that object down into, into shapes, okay? So this trumpet right here, we've got a large rectangular kind of right, right here. It balloons out here. Look at each shape and draw each thing one at a time. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be what you see. So that's my little trumpet. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do a few of these little music notes. I have one here that my, this, I must've been feeling, I don't know, up maybe, cause all up and down here. <laughs> but I'm just gonna show you some examples of some notes, okay? Because they're super easy to draw and I want you guys to know that. There are a few types that I drew. First simple one, remember your, your page paper needs to be completely dry before you do this step or you're gonna ruin your marker whether it's a washable one or a Sharpie. So um, mine is completely dry. I'm gonna do a few. So I'm gonna start with just a circle and I'm gonna color it in. And now I wanna decide which way that note is going. I think it's gonna go this way. So I'm just gonna do one straight line. And there, right there, 
is a music note. And now I'm gonna move it a little more and I'm gonna show you a different type. Do a circle, one straight line, and maybe a music artist or, I mean, a, somebody who knows what these are called could tell me. <laughs> because I don't know what that's called, but Ooh, that, that changes it. a very it. long time. You it made it in eighth note. note. Oh, I made it, okay, yeah. this is a quarter note and I made it into eighth note. I love it because I love the little, the little So that's how long off of it. you would hold the note for. Oh, okay, see, all the, Music is broken down into beats, and so that's how right. long of that beat you would hold it for. This one, I'm going to draw a, a double note. Is that <laughs> what this at, right? Also an eighth note, but it's mm -hmm. not broken off like that one is. Yeah. Oh. And so what about sometimes it looks that's not very even? Those right two here. make one quarter note. Mm -hmm. Right. See? <laughs> we have a lot of different artistic ability here. So feel free to, to fill up your page with all of that. Um, but like I said, you could absolutely draw anything on top of this and just have that beautiful movement in the background. I like the music notes because I like the feel. I like the idea that music makes you um, kind of move around. So I think we're just about wrapping up. I know that you guys can't finish, finish your pictures now. Um, please be patient and wait for your paintings to dry before you start drawing over them. Or again, you don't have to at all. Today was all about playing around with movement, moving your brush and seeing what that can do. Um, I hope you guys had a lot of fun. I hope to see all of your stuff. Um, let's see, was there anything? I think that's it. Your book. You oh, my book. I wanted to book. show you guys the book. Okay, so this book is available here at the Ziegler Art Museum. Hello, Antoine and friends. This is Antoine, written by our, our former um, director here, Celia Jo Black. This is a story that includes, um, it's actually kind of a true story. It's, a, it's based on something that happened to us when uh, the first year that we worked here at the Ziegler Art Museum. And these gators that live at the Gator Chateau actually come to the Ziegler Art Museum. So there's several places of Jennings in there. This is my favorite page I'm gonna show you. All right, <clears throat> so this is the gators. This is Antoine and Clotille. Um, they're in our, they're actually in our gallery. And those of you who know Little Mother and Morning, those are some of our really popular ones. You can see we turned them into little gators. Um, so it's a super cute book. I hope you guys come and get it. It's $20, that includes um, all of your tax. So it's $20 even. And 25 if you want some, uh, one of the, our cute little gator plushes, which I don't have here now. But it's a really cool book that includes a lot of Jennings and local stuff. So check that out. Um, thank you guys for joining us and for hanging in there with us. I know that we probably didn't get it perfect, but we're going to have it down. Don't forget to join me next week for folk art chickens. You're going to love the folk art chicken. Um, all right. You guys have a fabulous rest of your week and just keep creating. Bye. Bye.